All right, good morning. Quite a video today. I'm very excited. We're talking about teaching the younger years. So I have a ton of products for you regarding the younger years and a couple that are not that young. So we're talking preschool, we're talking kindergarten, we're talking grade one, even grade two. Uh, these programs even go up to grade three, but I don't necessarily recommend them for those grades. So I have secular programs, Christian programs, and a ton of products. So let's get to it. Okay. And at the end of the video, I have a, I'm going to tell you the curriculum that I, I wouldn't purchase again for the younger years, but uh, that's just me. So starting out here, we are doing writing letters. So if you want some cheap, fun, easy curriculums, I bought them all. These are kindergarten. They also have them for pre-kindergarten as well. So we got number puzzles and they go in order. So count the eight count the eight optics, then draw lines to connect the matching. So these are just number puzzles. So you're not learning, you're just like, this is nine. Now you're working on nine, right? So you're going numerically. Draw a fish to make 10. So kind of cool, kind of interesting. You can do it, pull them out of your purse, in the car, wherever. Okay, in the doctor's offices, this is writing letters. If you want a writing letters curriculum that's very simple, you can use one of these things just to write letters so now sometimes understand that you'll pull out a curriculum and you'll start handwriting for a lot of kids is extremely difficult because it's motor planning and it's not that fun for them so just a heads up that sometimes i've sometimes with some children of my kids i've had to like put it away for a year and then pull it out and try it again depending on i mean it really doesn't matter the curriculum um that's just the way some kids are, especially if your kids have like ADHD or they're neurodiverse in some way, handwriting is usually pretty difficult for them. Okay, so let's talk another product. This is a product that I'm showing you today because sight words. Sight words for some people, there are some kids that are easy with sight words and some kids that it's not. So sight words are generally, are very common words. They're based on the Dolch Preprimer list, which is like the 500, 200 or 500 most popular words back when this was created in children's books. So the 200 most popular words that are generally you can't sound out. So the words like and and the and things like that that are not that easy to sound out. So this is by Frazzles. This is the Dolch Pre-Primer flashcards. Let's flip through it. So this is is, all right? And you be, and then on the other side it has that. So what you do, what I did is it. Jump. So I went through and see on the other side how it has it without the picture. So I went through till they knew this and I'm telling you they pick it up so fast they pick it up so fast because of the mnemonic device and then you start going through it the other way so they will pick it up very quickly so just if you need some help getting sight words memorized that's the Dolch pre-primer sight word flashcards by frazzles all right if you found this helpful one of the things i need besides subscribers to my own channel is i have a kids channel and i need 10 more subscribers to hit 300 i need 10 more we go to parks and we go to playgrounds and I'm thinking about making a comeback with it, if you will, because it's been a, it's been like a few months since I filmed on it. So I was really hoping I'd get 10 more subscribers. So I'll put the link in the comments and if you can, if you can hit it and just subscribe. I'm not even saying you have to watch it. I just, I want to hit 300. If you could help me, that would be great. I would definitely appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's go into another product. This is handwriting. So this is letters and numbers for me. This is handwriting without tears. It also comes with a big box of wood that you can make a W with the, the wood. You can make, it comes with like a half circle and a line. So you can make an A with the wood. Is it necessary? And they're about this big. So you'd make giant letters. Is it necessary? No, it's not. So dear student, this is your book. You will learn to write. You will learn numbers. You make color too. Okay, so when we're starting off, we're teaching them basically how to hold the paper and learn and check that this is where the letter starts and things like that. So what I have them do is we do like one line every day, depending on their age. One line is one of the things we do. Reading and writing and math is what I focus on every, try to do it every single day. I mean, we go year round, but so we don't always hit every day because I still work. But reading, writing and math every day in some form or fashion. These are, this is shapes, Phil. It's, it's kind of interesting. All about loving yourself no matter what shape you are and no matter what shape you come in. Let's talk one more book. This is Chris Butterworth, How Does My Home Work? If you have kids who wanna know, look at this. Clean cold water in, clean hot water in, dirty water out, electricity in, natural gas in. So it really teaches you, hey, how does, when it goes through the toilet and out into the sewer system, like how does it get cleaned? How does it get cleaned before it goes back into the ocean? What do they do with, you know, stuff like that? 
So it's just basically how your home works, how lights work, how everything works. So it was, it was a hit in our house. All right, if you have a kid who loves mazes, they love mazes. Some kids love mazes. This is probably the best book of mazes I've seen for kids. It's Us Born Spy Mazes. And take a look through it. It's got all different types, all different levels of spy mazes in it. Just tons of spy mazes. When my son's going to sleep at night, if he has trouble falling asleep, I tell him, pull out this book and just go through this book. All different mazes. So that's us born spy mazes. Okay, before we get into more products, let's talk about a preschool program. A preschool program, I like Creative Kids Virtual Preschool. The reason I like it is because you can sit down, do it, it's like, a, and it's a teacher teaching you, and then you can print off the activities and do the activities. So it really is a preschool teacher is teaching your child. And if you sign up, I mean, you get, I did a ton of the lessons like for free. Another product. So if you want to teach art to your young child, you can start with not that book. That book is like the step up. But this book, A Child's Introduction to Art, it's pretty good. I have quite a few different art books to teach. Got the author. It's got all about the author. And then it's got information about the portrait. So you can just read this and discuss the portrait. So that's something, if you are interested in art, that is one option. That's a child's introduction to art. I would do, there's also this one, cause they, I feel like you go through that one really fast, but this is art, a child's encyclopedia. And this is interesting because it's got painting. See here, it goes painting, but then it's also got, as you go further in, it's got sculptures. It's got a lot of different mediums too, to go through. So it's got, like what I like about it is it's got a lot of pictures, but not a lot of text. Cause little kids, that is not my thing, is reading a bunch of stuff to little kids. But this is something, you know, how do you get kids interested in art? We just did it while we were eating breakfast. I would just pull it out and we would go through some of it. That's like the best time to teach if you ask me, just because, just because sometimes they're not sitting down. Now, another thing to do is, you can also do this book right here, which is how to teach art to children. This is a, this is one of the programs you can do with your kids if you wanted to. I didn't end up using it, um, but we aren't uh, we aren't a super artistic family. And the artistic videos I like, I don't know if you can see them on my bookshelf over there, um, but they are by I will put them. They are Home Art Studio, and they are fantastic because you only need paint, and it's an actual art teacher who teaches you how to be an artist. So you just need construction paper, paint, and glue and scissors and that's pretty much it. And she goes through all these different projects and you sit down at the table and you go through them too. And she shows you like how to create whatever it is. She recreates famous paintings. She does a lot of stuff. So she was before her time because they're only available on DVD. Um, because nowadays, you know, she would have like, you could pay for them um, online, but they're only available on DVD and I love them. And we just sit down, you know, a Friday or something, we'll sit down and do quite a few of them. So we may not do like art every day. We may not do art every week, but when we do, we sit down and we go through quite, we move the table in front of the TV or however. And then we, we just go through quite a few different projects if they want to. All right, let's talk about just a couple other this is another product. This is Welcome to the Symphony. So this is by, actually I don't know who this is by, but it's a musical explanation of Symphony of Number no. Five. It is not bad. It's one of my favorite. These little mice have never been to a symphony before. And so they are about to hear Beethoven. They are about to hear Beethoven and see what it's like and learn about the concert master and pitch and a note. And then there's all these numbers that you get to push to go along with it as you watch the symphony. So welcome to the symphony. No, I don't have enough subscribers and I don't have enough, I don't make enough money in order to put, put all the links for everything in there, um, in the description. So sometimes if you need them, just, you know, you can text me and ask me or, or make a comment and ask me and I can usually find it for you. This is cool. This is, um, I just bought this. This is vocabulary cartoon of the day. I'm huge into vocabulary. So four to six, what it is is again, mnemonic devices. So we ran out of tape, but I found lots of other things that can also adhere my posters to the wall peanut butter, honey, toothpaste. So add here. Okay, so look at this. So chagrin, here's the feeling, is an uneasy feeling of disappointment or humiliation. Once or twice I can understand, but there's no real cause for chagrin when you've bumped into the bowl as many times as he has. Boink, boink, you get it? I like it, and that is vocabulary cartoon of the day, ages four through six. All right, I'm gonna show you another product. These are from Classical Conversations, and I have all their cards. I love their science cards, um, but they're the science cards are my favorite, but these are very cool too. So it's just, it's got, 
they're actually an order to them. <laughs> So this is 29. So it's basically just an order of history. So this is ancient history. They have one for all different types of history. And all it is is so Assyria falls to Babylon. And then you can flip it over and you can read about, you know, the Assyrian Empire and things like that. So it's kind of cool um, to go through all these cards. I just think they're neat because they're, they're very sturdy too. Like I said, the science cards are my favorite, but I can't find the science cards. <laughs> Shocker. So there we go. Okay, and then our last book of the day before we get into curriculum would be The Magic School Bus. Honestly, for young kids, The Magic School Bus, it's a lot better than some other science books just because it has a story that goes along with it. Everyone knows Arnold. Everyone knows Miss Frizzle. I like the DVDs. I don't like the newer series. I like the older series. So basically what you do when you read through this book is look, so you start with the text, but as the kids get older, then, you know, you can add in this stuff. And as they get even older, then you can read uh, the stuff on the sides there. Okay. That's generally what I do. So you can read more, a word from Dorothy and you can read more once they get older. So it's got it on a variety of topics. Okay. Now let's talk curriculum. So what curriculum should you use with your preschooler, kindergarten, or grade one? Okay. I'm going to tell you a couple things. One of the things I have learned is that it's a lot easier. Your kids aren't, it's really tough when you go and you buy an entire curriculum and you're like, okay guys, let's sit down and do it. And they're like, yeah, I don't want to sit still. And you're like, great. Well, so kindergarten curriculums, I wouldn't spend too much money on. The exception being is what they need to learn in kindergarten, which is basically how to take math. Teaching math in kindergarten, like just basic addition and subtraction is what I did or the younger years. And you can do it by, if you make Play-Doh balls, and then you do, and then you smash the balls. Like, so you make three round balls and then you're like, okay, I'm going to smash two. All right. How many do I have left? And let them see, okay, you got one left. So that's kind of cool. But one thing you can do is, and then when it comes to the alphabet is, okay, so letters have a first name and they have a last name. And the first name is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And their last name is A uh, for apple and B for ball and things like that. A pre-reading one. Um, that does go through and help with rhyming and help with letter identification and things like that. But you can just get it online. You can go on Pinterest and be like, hey, what are some, you know, some alphabet activities and things like that. And that's all I did was, you know, I bought a bunch of curriculums and all I did eventually was just go online and be like, okay, well, let's create, you know, an alphabet book for my kids that we could go through and they could learn A, they could learn B, they could learn C and do an activity on each letter, which just basically letter identification. So meaning like, hey, pick out all the E's, pick out all the A's, pick out all the, the lowercase and the uppercase. So that's what I did um, for one of them. Now, another thing you can do is, okay, so take a look, understand that some curriculums that start in grade one, like a lot of curriculum start in grade one. So you don't have to worry. You can also switch if you wanted to. So when it comes to this right here is the kindergarten math review introduction. So it's basically showing that they know how to count, identifying shapes. So pardon me, there's some scribbles in here. Filling in. So by the time they get to grade one, filling in that they know like the number line. So really basic stuff that usually kids don't have a problem with. Color the shape on the right green. So just following general instructions. So doing patterns and things like that. So I honestly don't think for kindergarten or preschool that you need a curriculum per se. I don't necessarily think so. There are certain things you can use, but really getting them to do a whole entire curriculum. Now I'm gonna show you some examples of some that you can use anyway, um, but I just waited till they were older. And another thing with handwriting is like, so this is one of the books I like, Easy Grammar Grade One. So look again, it starts in grade one. So it starts with I am big. And it, and it teaches capitalization, okay? And so then it's like, put a period at the end of it, okay? And then what I'm showing you here is that you start with letter writing. So they do do copy work here. So you do do copy work here. So maybe this is a better example. Okay, so you're always working on capitalization, punctuation, lesson. So if you don't, if something's super important, you don't have to start it in kindergarten is what I'm saying. And it might be easier just to start it when they are when they are a little older. All right, so a curriculum for young kids that I don't see talked about that much, but is pretty good, is the Little Hearts for His Glory. And it seems to go all the way up to grade 12. I only have the first few years. Now, although you'd think, oh, it's just one book and that's where your lessons are in, that it's a relatively affordable program, it's still expensive. It's still, because you need so many additional materials to go with it. But let me give you a look inside. So this is the five to seven. But the six to eight to me, very similar. So if you were choosing, I would go six to eight. The very same, it's the same concept, except in here, the six to eight, we got some spelling that is beginning. Some word lists and stuff. And in here, we don't have that. 
But so let's take a look. So this is what it is, is every day is two pages. Now, the only things that need to be done, so it's relatively flexible, are the things with a star. That's it. So phonics, you're allowed to use your own phonics program or you can use their, pro their um, phonics choices. So there's story time. I don't, again, this book's like the story of Reddy Fox. I kind of like the 68 book better. That's just my opinion. I just like it a little bit better. But I just like the book choices better for this one as well. I think they're, they're a little bit better suited. So now when you look through this book, you're going to see this side is learning the basics, language arts and math. This page, this page is learning through history, which is about Jesus and religion. That's what this side is. And also science along with that. So for example, in this book, one of the activities they had for the science was, okay, we're going to turn off the lights and we're going to turn on a flashlight. You know, you say like, okay, before God created the earth, there was nothing. And then you turn on, you say, let there be light in kind of God's voice, if you will. And then you turn on the flashlight. So they have different activities like this. They're still young like this. They're not too far ahead. The book choices, I like the book choices that they've chosen. I have I have pretty much all of them, I think, because I, I bought the whole package. But let's go to the back here and see what else there is. So there's a bunch of poetry here. This is big on copy work too. It's big on copy work. So here's the spelling list. Let's take a look at the very first list. So the very first list is at, and, and, can, man, ran, ask, had, has and as. So they're short A words. So very short list, if that's your thing. It's not my thing really to teach spelling at this age. I mean, you learn it generally, but not specifically to focus on spelling lists. So poetry and rhymes, that's in the appendix. Reading about history. So American pioneers and patriots, they also have, I mean, they have quite a few good choices from Christian Liberty Press. And then they have their own maths, which I actually have. And I don't think I care for, but it, I mean, any math program is fine. I just liked other ones better. But I'm pretty sure you can sub in your own math because see how it has a check mark? That means it's not mandatory. If it's a check mark, it's your choice. It's just additional things to reinforce what you've discussed already that day. So using spelling lists from day one, choose three or more words that the students need to practice. Guide students use each of the words that you choose in a sentence. On a marker or piece of paper, write down the sentences as the students dictate them to you. Underline the spelling word in each sentence. Have the students copy the sentence on a piece of paper. Help students check their sentences and correct any mistake. So six to eight. So I do think it's age appropriate and it doesn't take a long time to go through and do these activities. There you go. There's not much to look at in this book. I know, I wish I could show you more, but there's not. There's really not much to look at. So language arts is usually always some type of copy work and then your phonics program or the one they recommend. Now, another example of this is five in a row. This is volume two, but it's still, this is ages five to nine. So again, what you go through, it's got a book list and you pick up the book list. This is not, um, I don't believe this to be Christian. Not that I could tell from reading it. Now you pick out, so let's go. You pick out a book. So let's start at the beginning. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna go. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. The Story of Ferdinand, very interesting FYI, by Monroe Leaf. So these are very interesting books, a lot of them. So you pick out a book. You don't have to do, you can choose which where you start. So let's do uh, Make Way for Ducklings 151. So you go to page 151. You do this, this is your student manual and this there's no student manual, so this is your book. So these this book will cover everything from Look at through. So this is Make Way for Ducklings. Every single day for five days, you read Make Way for Ducklings, and then you do social studies if you want. You can choose this. You choose the activities you want to do. Social studies. There's another social studies one. There's social studies. See, there's quite a few. There's vocab it goes into, language arts, rhyming, art, 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 art. So you choose. There's a ton of activities. You choose based on your child what you think they would do and choose an activity per day. Math, multiplication or grouping, math, counting practice. Math, converting days to weeks. Science, animal parenting. Science, development of a duck egg and science conservation. So it's a good program, an interesting program. And this is five in a row. It'll be about 48 bucks for this. Now let me show you something else. Something that I have pulled out here to show you. I wanna show you inside these books. These are real science for kids, but they're for little kids. Again, little kids. So they have five areas. So they got geology, astronomy. They have, um, if you'll see here, this is biology. They got chemistry. 
and they got physics, okay? So they have all different areas. Mine are all mixed up. <laughs> Mine are all mixed up, but let's take a look at an example of this. So you can buy each section, all right? So this would be biology. This is the cell, a tiny city. So it explains complex concepts to little kids. Okay, so let's start. So this is a cell, the cell, a tiny city. So this is in the biology. So let's look at Frogs and plants, so I'm just jumping into this book here. Frogs and plants are different from rocks and stars. Why? Because frogs and plants have cells. We have cells. Rocks and stars do not have cells. But, but wait, what is a cell? So do you see how it goes in? Cells are made of atoms and molecules, which you studied in another one of these books. Do you see how it teaches like archaea and bacteria? Complex, look at this. Bacteria have three basic shapes, rods, spheres, and spirals. Okay, so there you go, some interesting science books. Now let's get to the final curriculum, which I think is the awesome curriculum. Okay, so this is another curriculum that you can use for six to eight. This is moving beyond the page. If you're like, hey, should I do five to seven or six to eight? The five to seven, it's very young. Like it's for five, the earliest of five. So I would automatically go for this curriculum. And this is how this curriculum works. It has four books. Okay, so you have four books for the student, let me get to the beginning here. So this is the one that we're currently, that I'm working through. So this is moving beyond the page and they have concepts. They have four concepts per year in the five to seven and in the six to eight. Each concept comes with a corresponding teacher's manual. So the teacher's manual, very short. It shows you what skills you're talking about. So money, social studies, money. Okay, and then it tells you what materials you need and things like that. But essentially what it is, is you open up your book and you're like, so this is an example of an exercise, which is we have limited resources. So you got a new puppy and you have $15 to spend on him. Okay, so which circle what you would buy for that puppy. And here you're having a party of $20. What would you buy for that party, right? And then, but this, it's all mixed in. So all of your math, your language arts, it's not a learn to read program. I'll tell you that right now. And it's not a solid math curriculum, but you do do things like this for math. But language arts, history, geography, Everything is covered in here. All you would need outside of this, in my opinion, is just a language arts and like a learn to read program, a language arts program and, um, and a math program. So here is the Venn diagram. So this is an example of geography with them. So you pick a country. So we picked a community in Canada to match to a community in America. And then, hey, what do each do differently and what do they have in common? So for example, they have animals, they have bears, um, they have elected rulers and um, you can leave voluntarily and they share a border. So these are what they have in common. These are different between them. So these are just some of the activities that you do with them. So you do, I mean, you cover a ton of different things like describing attributes, making a cube, the leader, me, the flag, the inventor. I don't know. So they have, where can the flag be found in your community? Name of the invention, how the invention helped a community. So there's a lot of different activities to go through. And what I like is it's pretty easy. Like you just read a little spiel here about how to do it. And then you sit down, endangered species charade cards, endangered species subtraction. There are 18 alligators that lived in the marsh. 10 of the alligators did not have enough to eat. They had left to look for another place to live. How many animals were left in the march? So this is six to eight. And you can skip, and I'm telling you, it covers so many different topics and all you have to do is flip through the book. Just flip through the book. Like, okay, today we're talking about a plant. Label each part of the plant. Now there's books that go along with this too. You don't need the books. I generally, surprisingly, do not use the books that came with the six to eight. I just don't use them. We just sit down and then, oh, if we're talking about the plant, like it'll have a lot of information in this teacher's manual too. Um, but if there's a book, I mean, you can get the book from the library as well. So types measuring plants. So sunflower, pine tree, and bush. So you're just measuring these with your ruler. Plants used in my community. So this one is community. So that's why it's focusing on it, but it's got one with relationships. It's got one. It teaches a lot of things. So food chains, take a look at food chains. Now I've done other videos on this where I go in. So working together too. It's like, how long does it take you to make your bed if you do it with someone else, set the table and pick up a choice? And how long does it do it if you do it alone? And then voting too, it's got a thing in here for voting. Like, okay, have everyone in the family choose, you know, choose three activities of what you guys can do that night and then have everyone in the family vote and then you tally up the votes and that's how you decide what to do tonight. 
So the, as you can see, there's quite a few different curriculums. The one curriculum I don't like, which I've spoken about before, is I love a Becca. I love a Becca like grade one and up. I don't love a Becca, the kindergarten one. And one of the things is, is because of the price, Ooh. because it's so expensive, um, it, it really is. It's like a, just about a thousand dollars just for one child. And that's without the videos. So just their kindergarten is, so I use a lot of elements from their programs, but just older. And these are like their learn to read books. So the blend book isn't bad. This is the K5. That's another thing is there's a K4 and a K5. So it starts off pretty easy, which is, okay, the phonics chart. And then it's got, all right. So it's got these sounds like N is nest, O, ostrich, so that you know what to make. But then it goes through these. So pretty simple. It's kind of like elemental phonics is the same thing, except elemental phonics is 10 bucks <laughs> per book. And this is not. And then it has books that go along with it. But like, if you look, so book two, book two, I'm not, I, so I can read well, I can read well. And then book two, I do read. So it's a different level, but this will be the first one. So a pet, a cap, a bat, a cat. So it's to me, it's not the easiest reading program like to teach. I just don't find it that easy to teach, but also, um, I mean, it's pretty intensive. I don't do intensive programs. I'll tell you right now, I got too much going on. Uh, but so Pam and Liz sat on the log. I just don't think they're that it's I just other reading programs I've seen. I like them better. Uh, but that's just me. I, yeah, I like them better. Other reading programs, learn to read programs. And I've done quite a few videos and all the language arts videos I've done are for various grades. So that's just me. That's just the program I like least. Um, but there you go. There's some options for kindergarten, grade one and younger kids, preschool and all that. So I hope to help you. Take care. Have a great day. Can you say please like and subscribe? Please like you like. And hit the bell for notifications. Hit the bell for notifications.